Hey, bro, let's get into this thing. It's Demasi and Michael just talking tech. So is Edge set as your default browser? No. <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. It does not. So what I did is I went to see more apps. That does look for another app on this PC. Really? You're going to make me completely browse to Google Chrome.exe? This is ridiculous. Yeah, I think it'd be faster for me to just open it. See, and people, this is why you need to figure out your workflows for being productive. When you try new things or you're trying to get shit done. <laughs> that is oftentimes what leads to uh, what is the opposite of being productive? Non productivity. Okay. Yes. Would be the way to go. Yeah, it's funny because a lot of people end up in that trap of, oh, I got to try this new app or this new service or this new feature they just added to my operating system. And instead of, you know, setting aside, quote unquote, downtime to, you know, play around with a new thing and see if it works. You're like, oh, no, I'm just going to do it right now while I'm in the middle of, you know, working. It's like, yeah, that doesn't always go well. Most times it does not go well. So... It's interesting you bring that up because while working, uh, I sometimes you have that ability to have downtime. Sometimes you have to be flexible to be able to figure out what's going to make you the most productive while doing everything you need to do on a daily basis. Because like for me, I've learned when using Zendesk, I need to turn virtual viewer off if I want to make any settings to certain parts of the Zendesk interface. Mm -hmm. I want to make any changes to that. Then I need to turn virtual viewer off. Well, I work for the company that I'm working for right now. And it took me a month to figure that out. But now that I know it, it makes me a lot more productive at my job on a daily basis. Understood. Understood. But it's not like I could just sit around and, and poke at different things, but that comes down to your, Ability or desire to be more productive. Because if you just want to get the minimum done and take however long you want, then you're not going to find those little loopholes while you while you're working. Yeah. I don't know if that made any sense. Yeah, I don't yeah, it did make sense. And I don't mean like be completely inflexible. What I was more touching on is like, uh, let's say so Apple adds, you know, like when Apple updated reminders, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, instead of you saying, okay, I'm going to take a look at this reminders app, see if it works. It's like, nope, moving everything into reminders right away. Uh, and expecting <laughs> to continue to be productive. Or, you know, somebody tells you about how great text expander is, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to start using that right now. Like, you go download it, install mm-hmm. it, where you're going to spend like 10 minutes getting it set up. Then you got to figure out how to use it, where you're supposed to be working. Right, right, like you're right. not getting any work done because you're fiddling with this thing that's supposed to make you more productive. Like, and and in your environment it is is very different because you really wouldn't have time to sit there and fiddle with text expander. Like that is definitely a mm-hmm. a downtime sort of activity. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like there are times where you need to figure stuff out as you're going, and you should totally be flexible enough to do that. But you also have to be, I think, um, intuitive enough to understand when something is wasting time versus you getting something done. It's like, okay, I'm doing this the long way. Okay, well, right now I cannot stop my job or stop my work to automate this, but I know it's automatable. Okay, I'm going to push that off to a later date instead of just stopping in the middle of your work and be like, okay, I'm going to figure out how to automate this, right? This Apple script, <laughs> you know, do this, do this. You spend two and a half hours and look, I'm, I'm guilty of it. First of all, like I had to learn yep. the lesson that I'm speaking right now, but also I am guilty of spending two hours on working on getting a little script to work that maybe saves me 10 seconds every time I use it. Uh, but thing is, I don't ever have to worry about doing that, that process again because I have a script that does it for number one. I may never get those entire two hours back. Uh, over the lifetime of using it. But the second thing that automation brings into your workflow uh, is the ability to eliminate mistakes. Like when something mm-hmm. is being done precisely by the computer every single time, then that eliminates the mistakes uh, that you, the human, would make because you will forget a step in this process. 
Well, let's let's get a little more technical. That eliminates the mistakes that may happen until IT decides they have better ideas in mind for you and changes a little thing around. <laughs> well, see, that's why all IT people should be like me. Uh, well, maybe not exactly like me, but they should be more like me. They should think more like me, which means number one, before we push anything out here to the to the and I don't I really seriously don't mean for this to sound derogatory at all. But before I push mm-hmm. this out here to the regular people for them to have to use it, it should be tested first to make sure that it does what we think is going to do. Not just, right. oh, this looks great. Write the code or make the changes <laughs> to the settings and hit update. Now nah, everybody's got it. Uh, you know, it's like WordPress. Like you don't just go around randomly updating your WordPress site because oh five point five is out. Let me update it. Uh, it broke a couple of uh, things. Uh, mm. Like there were some issues where where people couldn't you know add like what are they call the image the the primary image that shows up on your oh your yeah WordPress post yeah like they couldn't update featured image change things yeah feature images thank you. Uh, and for some people the the solution to that problem was to clear their browser cache. Right. And then that for some reason solved the problem. Very weird. What it turns out to be is WordPress removed some portion of the jQuery library. It's very technical. We don't need to get into it. They removed a portion of the jQuery library that a lot of plugin developers were actually using in 5.5. So they had to put it back in 5.5.1 because it broke a ton of stuff for different. Mm-hmm. People. But if you went around just, you know, operating on the premise, well, it's an update. We're going to update it. Just hit update, right? And then now your customers, coworkers, et cetera, can't update their blog posts or make changes in the way that they're used to because you just broke something because you didn't test it first, right? That That's the right. whole premise behind, you know, what a lot of corporate. On the other side, you can't be so rigid that you can't move swiftly to, you know, roll out an update to your end users. Uh, when there's a major flaw, right? You can't take six weeks to text an update that contains a serious patch for a remote execution vulnerability uh, to your software. Like that's that's just unacceptable. Because in the meantime, while you're testing, people are getting hacked. It's a fine line to to yeah. straddle because yeah. you you want to stay secure, but you don't want to break shit when you're trying to stay secure. So and. You know, this this is primarily focused at that point uh, for what we're talking about, honestly, to corporate customers or customers who are working with multiple different people. Because on the other hand, I see an update and Remy tells me to update it. Oh. <laughs> She's like, man, push the button, man. I'll do it if you don't do it. So I see an update and I will go in and push that button and I will update it. And because it's all my stuff, I mean, the worst it's going to do is you're not going to be able to do something. And well, between you and me and the listeners and whoever's ears we're in, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out your way around it if WordPress breaks or you will have already had a heads up and say, hey, I can't I can't add media, Michael, because you updated your WordPress site. But the thing is, is it's the two of us. And that's really the only two people that log into that site. Now, if I was managing a site for, you know, 5, 10, 15 different people, then I would definitely need to figure out a, a solution to test that prior to pushing that update button because i'll be honest i hate seeing those notifications in wordpress that says five new updates well what needs to be updated so i have to go in and and get that that button to go away so that way i don't see any updates yeah and that's that's sort of the downside to that whole operation uh i oftentimes if i'm completely managing the updates for a site for example uh and the owner of the site is you know just posting content, et cetera, I will hide admin notifications uh, from anybody else so they don't ever see the update notification because the instinct is to just push the button to make it go away. Right? Yep. It's like, oh, there's an update. I better update it right now. Uh, that That's kind of the world that we live in because people have been uh, trained to that sort of behavior like, oh, there's a thing. Click it. Do this. Do this. And then you also hear people like me who don't necessarily all the time clearly explain what we say, well, you got to stay up to date so you stay secure. It's like, oh, so there's an update. I should push it just in case it's got something to do with security. It's like, yeah, take proper precautions, right? And that's the thing that a lot of people leave out of that whole step is like your scenario of you just update your own pay, right? And then it breaks something. Well, number one, uh, there's a backup of that site. 
that's within the last 24 hours that has been performed so like completely host the site like just roll back to the update right like that that's a quick recovery uh, yep. outside of anything else um everybody's not taking it's just like me when i update my mac like i get an update it's like there's an update for mac os to 10.15 point <laughs> seven or whatever like, yeah. you know, uh, if i'm not actually doing any work when i see that i will go ahead and update it but also have a backup that was done at like three some this morning right so if it hoses my system like the worst is going to happen. the worst problem i have to deal with uh is potential screwing up of icloud data right because google mm-hmm. is not going to let you wipe out all of my stuff out of my google drive folder uh just instantly like that and I have a backup that I can restore back to the previous version of Mac OS. So I feel more comfortable hitting that update. Plus, I don't have a Mac to go test the update on. It's like, well, let me test this update on this old <laughs> Mac and see if it, like, there's a, but again, like taking proper precautions, though, you feel more comfortable doing that, yeah. right? Whereas for a client site, you're going to take a little bit more, more, uh, Patience, even to the point of like where I've updated my site and I use, you know, some of the same plugins I use over there. There are no issues. There have been no issues reported by anybody that just, you know, completely holds somebody's database or something. So it should be safe to update. Right. You don't have to necessarily go through the entire thorough, um, you know, deploy, pull a copy of their site local install it locally update it locally (laughs) okay that works locally okay push it to a staging server okay it works in staging now we can update the production site like you don't have to go through that entire process especially for you know most wordpress sites it's like if you if you have an enterprising site you know big business you know new york times something like that that's run on wordpress like that process should already be in place right they do need to do that because they cannot afford to but they're they're i really honestly wouldn't even want to be involved in their deployment slash update process uh because in between you testing an update like somebody's posted 10 new articles to the website so <laughs> geez, I want, you know roll the database over that like I, I, uh, database merging i don't like it uh right, not a fun right. thing so moral of this section of the podcast is if you're going to try things out figure out what your workflow is to try them out whether that be Roll it out to a test group of people to see how they like it, or just make sure you have a backup because backups can save your ass a lot of times. I told Mike this story before uh, <laughs> offline. I don't know if I ever mentioned it on the podcast. I was going through doing some cleanup on my system because I was trying to record, restore some uh, storage space on my SSD. And I deleted a couple of folders that I shouldn't have deleted. Uh, but I wasn't thinking, I was like, well, I'm no longer working on that project or no longer, or I'm not currently working on it. I need to do mm-hmm. that, blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately the config files were also in the folder that let me connect to databases or whatever. So it was like, I don't even know what the name of the database is anymore. Uh, well, backups saved my tail, right? I was able to go into <laughs> ARC, uh, for this particular and the thing is, like, I didn't realize it until like two days later. So, like, I had backups, you know, my backups on the external drive were yep. written. Like, oh, you deleted that file? We're going to delete that file. All right, good deal. That's what you wanted us to do. ARC is what saved my tail in that case because I could go <laughs> back a week in ARC and then pull the file and re, you know, re, re add it to my back to my computer. ARQ, amazing application. I have not looked at uh, version six of that recently, but I do know it looks appears to be an Electron app. It works very horribly mm-hmm. on the Mac. Mike says it works good on Windows. Yep, sure uh, does. Arc I mean, it's not is, fully accessible on Windows, but it's it's doable for what you need to do. Arc 5, on the other hand, I'll let you explain that on the Mac, but on Windows, eh, not the most user-friendly. Kind of interesting how that flip-flops. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, Arc Five is what I'm what I'm currently using right now because it is still, uh, you know, 100 accessible. I should I have mentioned this to Mike. I should actually send feedback to the uh, developer about version six, and I I feel like I kind of did, but I'm not certain if I actually sent it or if I wrote it and then never got around to sending it because it is a little iffy to sort of explain. It's one of those accessibility things like showing somebody is much better than. Uh, you know, much better than trying to explain it to them in words because it's like you really have to be a voiceover user in order to understand what I'm trying to tell you unless I show it to you. 
and then just getting out screen flow to record a quick demonstration that you're not ultimately going to make money from is uh, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, you might think, Oh, I just, I can, you can just record a, so I told Demasi about this yesterday. You can just record a quick demo of you doing it. Well, that's that it, things don't always work the way you expect them to do. For example, yesterday I was working on one of my Kelly co segment, uh, pre-recorded things. And I, Got, time kind of got away from me and I recorded for 20 minutes and after editing and everything realized I only had three minutes of content so sometimes when you're trying to get get something recorded especially if you want it to come out semi-professional so people will take you seriously it's not as easy as just whip it out and record it so Demasi let's transition into the primary topic of something that I know we've talked about offline and I think we kind of want to focus on Links to anything mentioned, obviously, in this episode can be found at your own pay.com slash DM57. Yes, DM57. Had to make sure I had that right. And because we, yeah, we, we are that. ahead officially. Yeah. So now it's going to throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> that is productivity and using apps to help you be more productive. We've touched on this a couple of times. Uh, I've mentioned to do us. Demasi's mentioned to do us. I'm fairly certain Demasi has mentioned OmniFocus on the podcast. But when I realized that I was kind of falling off of the Todoist bandwagon, I'm like, man, I told Demasi, and I believe either he said it or I said it, but we figured we needed to talk about Todoist and our productivity habits on the podcast. So what are you doing for productivity and how is that going for you, Demasi? Here's where I am, man. I am. There's some stuff that makes it into to do list for me and there is a lot more stuff that is not making it into to do list um part of it is just i, I don't know man like I, I really can't explain how i feel but i just feel like things are tedious to to add it's like uh you know open up the app tap add you know type in or dictate save but then i got to configure all these little minor steps and some of this could be possibly remedied by me uh going over to some of the help docs a little bit more to figure out how to you know set the the, the reminder schedule uh in, in natural language so i don't have to manually go through and select you know notify me remind me etc cetera, etc cetera. uh but it just feels a little tedious because i'm thinking about something i can very easily you know write that down but then it's the extra parameters that are starting to that that seem to really kind of aggravate me it's like oh what, what's the due date and does it go to a project or not so i'm, I'm not doing great with to do is at the moment uh i'm still using it I'm, I'm still overall happy with to do is itself like that. i don't think there's any other application out there that solves this problem in any sort of significant way that, that makes it different uh it's just i don't know man just tedious so for me, it's slightly different because I'm I have a love hate relationship with Todoist myself. I have a problem with completing tasks, so I yeah. get shit done, I get stuff done, but then oh, I yeah. forget to go mark it off in Todoist, uh, saying, "Hey, I finished that up." So on Android, which probably by the time this episode comes out, we will have changed things. So hopefully, you're following us on Twitter because I'm really looking at the iPhone for me. I can just add a add new task widget to the bottom right corner of my phone. Is there an add new task widget or a quick way to add new task? Because I'm wondering if maybe leveraging shortcuts in some manner might help with remedying your problem with getting tasks in. Um, there is. So now in iOS 14, there is a add. Uh, there, there's several kind of widgets for Todoist, actually. Uh one is a add new task, uh, and it's even customized down to, you know, letting you pick the project that is going to go to or the label that'll be applied to it. So it is pretty, I haven't actually sat down and said it. Widgets are a little fiddly with voiceover on 14 right now. Like they seem to be, not all of them are as accessible as others. So you have to do a little faffing around to get it to work, but that, that does exist. Another thing is that like I need to. So I, I part of this is my fault because I started deconstructing some of the automations and things that I had set up because things it to me, at least it got out of control. I had like, I don't know, 200 and some shortcuts and like I don't <laughs> use most of these. 
uh, drafts. I cleaned out my, I've been cleaning out my drafts. So I dumped most of the actions that I had in drafts, uh, except for a very handful that I knew I used on a very regular basis. And then I started either rebuilding or, you know, adding actions someone else had created. I still want to actually dump my entire database of drafts out and empty it out as well. Uh, but there is some stuff that I need to keep there. So I've been doing some digital cleaning. One drafts action that I need to add back, uh, which I have one now, I need to tweak it a little bit. Uh, but you know, I sit in drafts like as we're, if I'm, you know, conducting a call with a potential uh, customer, I will write down things, right? And then I can run mm-hmm. this this action and it will add all those things to a particular project or inbox or whatever in Todoist. Now, oh. what I want is to be able to write my notes and then using particular indicators like say putting a hyphen in front of something would indicate that that's a task so that it's not trying to process the entire draft is looping through the draft and picking out the things that match a certain you know syntax and adding those as 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 actions as uh to do to uh to do is shortcuts i really have not played around at all with to do is shortcuts that are there partially because Mm -hmm. going into the summer you know a lot of shortcut shit was broken uh yeah, going from my and you were on beta time. over the summer, weren't you? Yeah, I was. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of stuff was broken on beta with shortcuts. Like some, you know, this beta this works. Next beta that doesn't work, but now this one works. Like it's very weird. So I didn't start adding new stuff. Also, they changed. They made some underlying changes to the way shortcuts work in 14. So I didn't really the entire summer, other than some shortcuts that I built just to test things, I really didn't add anything new or try out anything new because I knew, you know, I wasn't going to really get the full effect of it until they could push their updates live to iOS 14 once it was released. So, uh, for example, there's, there's new actions for several apps like, uh, Devin thing, for example, has, uh, shortcut actions now. So you don't have to screw Hmm. around with their, URL scheme to do stuff. And I think a lot of that is due to some of the underlying changes in 14. So yeah, you're right. Like there, there are ways to automate the process is just one thing that I need to do personally, because like I said, where I end up spending most of the time is trying to get the reminders to work because I don't always get notifications when I think I should. Uh, <laughs> when I know I have set them up and it's like, Oh, what happened to the notification for that thing that I forgot about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also like you, um, the things that make it in there, like they're there. Uh, but like you, like I oftentimes forget to go check them off. Like I have done the thing and it's like, oh, I go into do is to, to clean up some stuff or add some new things, create a new project or something. It's like, oh, why do I have all these past due to, oh, I did that. I did that. I did that. I did that. I did It's like, geez, like what? But that goes back to the notification problem, right? I don't get a notification. So it doesn't necessarily prompt me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because that's my prompt, right? It's like either I need to go start doing this because I haven't done it yet or I have done it. Oh, let me check it off because I got the notification, which is fairly easy to do, you know, even from the lock screen. Like just, you know, flick down, complete. All right, you're done. That mark mark done. That is, oh man, flick down. Just flick down. (laughs) (laughs) Some of the other things I do want to do with Todo is to uh, is you know get more into using the API with third party services. Like we have a couple of things that uh, you know for for our hosting project that we're working on. Like that is one thing I want to be able to do mm-hmm. is that support tickets come in is have those get filed to a project in Todoist uh, so that I see it, but I'm not dealing with email because I uh, man email annoys me. Uh, to know you me. and me both but i'm still a to-do issue user man like it is is, is yeah cool going forward like i said i probably should spend some time with the docs a little bit more uh you found an interesting article on reddit that someone walked through this what looks like an extremely convoluted way of doing deferred dates what was what was what i said when i sent that to you uh, uh I think this looks like what you want, but I need to wrap my mind around it or something. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And I read it and I was like, oh, I, I, I I get the gist of what they did. I need to read that a couple of times before I can actually go (laughs) produce that. It's like, do I really want to go through all of that trouble? Because here's the problem with it. Like here's the overarching problem with it anyway. Uh, It is the manual moving of a task or a task from this 
list to that list so that they go from being, you know, deferred into active and then now I'm done with it, especially if it's a recurring task, I need to move it back. That's problematic. Demasi, my question for you, though, is why Todoist over OmniFocus if OmniFocus was working well for you in the past? Very simple. Web access, API uh-huh. access, third-party yep. integrations. Like that, that is what did it. Once I started looking at Todoist and the accessibility of the iOS app did improve uh, tremendously over the years. The Mac app has gotten better. It's, it's not perfect, but it's better than what it was. But right. Uh yeah, it's it's the ability for third party integrations like uh you know, like I said, our support ticketing system that we configure uh for business is like for me at least is gonna be tied to to do it. So if one of you guys marks assigns a task to me in there, like that's gonna go to to do it. So that way mm-hmm. I don't forget about it. Uh that's something I can't do with OmniFocus at this point. Uh the closest you get to Third party integration with OmniFocus is uh, forwarding an email to your super secret OmniFocus email address, uh, which then goes to your inbox. Because last I looked, they did not have the capability. They did have the capability for you to create multiple of those secret email addresses. So, like I could give one to Michael that Michael could use, and then I could, just, so if Mike started to annoy me with tasks, I could turn his off and not screw up my stuff. <laughs> uh, but they all go to the inbox. It's not like, oh, here's one for your, you know, DMD project. So everything that gets hit to this address goes to DMD. Like there's, there, there wasn't even that level of customization. And I'm not certain that they're going to be able to, or at least at this current time, they're able to even do that. Uh, so you look at something like Zapier that does have an integration with so Zapier, Zapier, whatever. ZA, whatever, Zapier. Uh, you look at something <laughs> like Zapier that has integrations for OmniFocus, but all it is basically doing is the same thing. It's like whatever comes into Zapier or whatever gets processed by Zapier then gets sent to your Omni, OmniFocus email that goes into your inbox. So now it's incumbent upon you to go to your inbox and separate things out and move them around and assign them to the correct project. Now, on the one hand, I hear some people yelling. I am yelling at myself right now. That's part of the whole get getting things done mentality. You dump it all in the inbox and then you process it later. Huh. Yeah. How's that working out for you, Demasi? Yeah. So, look, that works to a certain extent. But sometimes I know where a thing needs to go. Like mm-hmm. I know exactly where it needs to go. I don't want to have to process it in my inbox or I don't want it to get lost in the mix with other stuff. Let's go back to our support ticketing system. A question comes in, Mike sees it first, but then Mike says, oh, well, that's the thing for Demasi to deal with because I don't know the answer to that. So he assigns it to me. It goes to I'm, uh, not OmniFocus to do it. Well, yep. the way that my to do is is going to be configured is that anything coming in, first off, it goes to a particular project. Uh, and everything in that project gets a label and a super high priority. So nothing in that label or or, or, or project, nothing in that label is going to be, uh, you know, priority four or priority three. It's going to be priority one because I need to look at it, or at least priority two. We'll, we'll save the priority one stuff when some shit really blows up. But priority two, right? So that automatically means that if I just have a filter that says show me all of the prior, priority two stuff, I haven't had to go in and move anything, right? This task came in, got assigned to me, went to to Todoist, and bam, when I open up a particular filter that says, show me all of the things assigned to me that have priority to, well, then now I see somebody's having a problem with their media files in WordPress. Okay, let's go solve this problem. OmniFocus, that's in the inbox, which means if I go process my inbox at 10 o'clock at night, well, you know, probably not going to feel like trying to solve that problem 1030 at night, which means it gets pushed <laughs> off to tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah, third party integration is what did it for me. The biggest thing I miss about OmniFocus at this point, honestly, that is difficult to duplicate and to do is uh, the deferred date. Sometimes yep. you have a project and. The best example this guy gave in the or this person gave, I don't know if it's a guy or not, that this person gave in Reddit was I have recurring tasks to, you know, change the filter in the furniture zone. Uh, 
Well, once I check that off, months. it's not due again for another three months. I don't want to keep seeing that when I look at my task list uh, that I need to deal with the furnace because it's not due. It's not time yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be awesome if to doers could add like some sort of deferred date or or some feature. They don't have to call it deferred dates because then it was like, hide and tell or yeah, don't like, show me this. Go. Or, good deal, good deal. Yeah. Hide and tell or something. Uh, and there's people out there saying, "Well, just look at your your daily tasks or your seven days tasks." Well, sometimes. I want to look at all of the household tasks to say, well, what do I need to get done? Right. And some of those tasks will show up even though they're like, for me, mine is change the water filter. I have to change the water filter every, I think it's 160 days or something. I put whatever the package said. I literally threw that into to do us change water filter every 160 days. And you know what? Every 160 days, it pops up and tells me that I need to do it. The other one related to that is because I know we have three water filters. I put, uh, I, I multiplied 160 times three and I said, buy new water filters in X amount of days. So I don't want to see that I need to buy new water filters until it's actually that time. Um, and But if I go look at all my household tasks, there it is right there. Granted, I see the due date, but I, I really don't want to worry about that. Yeah, because what if you like you, you might be in a frenzy and you're like frantically buying things in Amazon or Walmart or something. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I should buy this too because I need this. Oh, shit, I did not need those water filters. And I just yeah. spent 45 bucks on water filters I didn't need yet. Yep, uh, yep. Totally but now I can mark this off and it won't remind me for, <laughs> well, if, if I set it up right, every exclamation mark, 600 days or whatever, now it won't remind me for 600 more days, but it'll still be there. So I might right go there, buy more yeah. water filters in a couple of weeks. Right? Like, it's not it just does. that I'm going to yeah. foolishly do something that I didn't intend on doing. Like, that, that's possible in some circumstances. But it's also like, it's just cluttering up the interface. It's like, oh, never mind. Ignore that. Ignore that. And then your mind gets into this state where it's... It's like you see something, it doesn't immediately, all the information that you just took in doesn't immediately click and you start ignoring things because you keep seeing them until it's like, oh, I didn't check it off because, oh, shit, I actually needed to do that yesterday. Uh, and then I you just, fall into uh, the trap that we found ourselves in where you're not adding tasks to the tool to help you with staying on task and you're not completing tasks in the tool to help you stay on task. There you go. But enough beating up on the app. So, Mike, what are you doing that is working for you and to do is because one thing I want you to, you know, talk to well, talk to me about, which means talk to everybody else about at this point is your use of labels. Uh, that's something uh. I really haven't explored too much. I do know you have a couple that help you deal with filtering. Yeah. So. I have a setup. It's it's a pretty basic setup in my opinion. Uh, so what I have is I have my inbox like everyone has. I do dump tasks in there every once in a while. But like you, I also like to be able to categorize or move to a specific project items when they need to be moved. And then I have two labels right now. I have a, well, two that I can think of and share. I have a bills label and then I have a phone calls label. I also have a smiling heart emoji that are, that that to me reminds me, I need to talk to Mallory about this. Usually if something comes up during the day and I need to talk to her, I'll throw that label on it. And then I can, I have filters set up. Uh, well, actually, I'm not using filters. I'm just, and I'm thinking about this now. I just use the label itself and pull that up. Or is that a filter set up that grabs the label? I don't remember. Uh, uh, so I can ask you a question, but that is hilarious. Mallory doesn't listen to the show, does she? No, no, See, she doesn't. This is why she should listen. She shouldn't listen to any prior episodes because it's <laughs> fucking shoes. Right, <laughs> but with her job maybe maybe now i, I can download a podcast app listen. and she'll start yeah. listening yeah yeah <laughs> uh, uh, anyway uh but yeah so if you're not so if you don't do like a, a, a filter where it's like show tasks that have this label in our blah 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 like just tap it. if you just go to the label and just tap on it that that mm-hmm. technically is a filter but you didn't make it it's just like it's just showing you stuff with that label 
Uh But you can set up a, like one of the things that I know I have set up and this might be redundant, but I do have it set up as a, as a bills filter is I have a bills tag and all of my tasks to keep my household uh, or to keep my inbox empty, go into the household project, which I was just talking about. And so if I want to go see all of my bills, I hit the menu button in the top left corner on Android. I go down to bills, which I believe is the label. And I just tap on that and it shows me the bills. I think I can set up a filter while I'm thinking about this that would show me just bills due in the next week. Um, but I'm not 100% sure how that would work. Yeah. Because well, I'm horrible about that. <laughs> yeah. But that that is that that would be you setting up a filter. So it's like, you know, yeah. label. Uh, and it kind of, if I remember, because I haven't set up a filter in a while, actually. Uh, but it it's, will be sort of like, okay, anything with this label, you will put in the label. Like, I think it kind of walks you through the process. Uh, and due date within, you know, next seven days. So that yep. will constantly be a moving target, right? So like if a bill was due today, it would show up when you looked at it today. But when you looked at it tomorrow, that bill shouldn't be there because it's not within those seven days now. Yeah, yep. But that doesn't mean you actually marked it as complete. It it's just based on the due totally date. Because that you did not pay that bill whatsoever. Yes. Uh. yes. That is literally the one thing I'm, I can consistently say that I use to do is for. I know my bills start about the 25th or 26th of the month. So uh, about the 25th or 26th of the month, I kind of work out of the bills uh, tab. I go in and I pay some bills that I know need to be paid, and then I'll check them off in there. And I do remember to check those off. But here's the thing with bills when you're just working out of the label, not the tab, but the label, uh, if I marked off pay the water bill, which is due the 29th of the month. And I mark it off on the 27th because I got paid a couple days early and I just went ahead and took care of that. I still see pay the water bill, but it says the 29th of October instead of the 29th of September. Mm -hmm. And that's why deferring uh, tasks or, or setting up a good filtering system, which I need to get back into the habit of doing would be nice. When I'm on iOS, I do plan to do it. And honestly, actions, I miss actions. (laughs) <laughs> I already said that, but but the actions are order option to be able to just flick down and mark a task is complete. Because right now, I have to flick to the right of the task to find the checkbox to mark it complete, which sounds uh, trivial. It, it does sound trivial, but flicking down once and double tapping sounds a lot more convenient to me. Although now that I'm thinking about it, it's the same thing. I'm just flicking in a different direction. <laughs> Can you mark, can you select Ooh. items with the rotor in Todoist, like bulk select them? So let's say you add 20 tasks to your inbox and you're like, you know what? 10 of these need to go into the uh, podcast uh, uh, project. Can you multi-select? Because with Android, you have to double tap and hold on each task to s- add it to the multi-selection. So to do that, you hit the more actions button in the top right corner. Mm-hmm. And then there's a select task option in that menu that pops up. Then you can go through and just double tap to select a task. Uh, huh. I should see if that works the same on Android because maybe I've been doing it the long way for a while because there is a more options button in the top right corner. But I've just found double tap and hold. You feel that little tap and then you go down, double tap and hold. Because if you just double tap on a task and not double tap and hold, then it pulls you into the task so you can make mm-hmm. modifications to that task itself. Mm-hmm. Double tapping and holding just then when I did it, because uh, I thought that was the way to do it, and maybe it was, maybe that's a holdover for me looking at it on Android. Uh, it yeah. brought up the context menu, which gives you the same uh, options that are basically on the rotor for voiceover users, which is, uh, ah. and maybe select task was in that menu. I didn't go all the way down. I just saw uh, complete uh, reschedule, a couple other things that are in the rotor. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a rotor thing. I know mm-hmm. that there's a way to get that to instantly pop up. Uh, yeah, the more actions button, top right corner, gets you there. To do this is actually really a nice app. Uh, it is. It, it is. It. It's a terribly awesome service. Uh, and it's just something to maybe, figure out this filtering thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should, we'll readdress filtering. I think we need to commit to playing with Todoist in the next couple of weeks and yeah, yeah. figuring it out because 
it could be even more powerful than what we're using it for right now. Because right now, if 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 you're using it the way it sounds like you're using it, we're both just using it for pretty much get this out of my mind. I'll go complete it when I got time. Versus, I should be working directly from this app like I used to be in the past when I first yeah, got started. Yeah, and maybe yeah. that's. I was going to say, maybe that's just part of growing with a task management tool is you realize once you put it in there, you're going to do that task, but there's got to be a consistent way to complete stuff. So, Dwasi, over the next couple of weeks, I think we'll focus on trying to be more productive and keeping track of that productivity because I feel like we have this conversation about two or three times a year, uh, either on a podcast or or privately uh, with trying to get things more completed more and and being more productive inside of Todoist. uh, Let us know what you're using for productivity and to keep track of all the tasks, because I'm very intrigued by people who are just using iOS reminders. I don't know if that would work for me, but I also haven't played with iOS reminders. So let us know. Uh, he's on Twitter at Damasi, D-A-M-A-S-H-E, and I'm on Twitter at Payone, P-A-Y-O-W-N. Show notes and links to stuff mentioned at yourownpay.com slash DM57. You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content and to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast, yourownpay.com.